Polygoners! Welcome back! I know we've had a little bit of an extended break, but today we've got an exciting Zerg vs Protoss for you. Today we're going to be looking at this red Zerg player currently playing for Root Gaming. He is Nero. And his opponent on the top right hand side of Acolyte is none other than Maples. So this is Zerg vs Protoss. Lately you've been seeing a lot of Hydra, Ling, Baneling. And I've been in the process of theory crafting with one of my casters named Sluggy. Um, he's a Korean player, pretty talented fellow. And we've been talking a lot about how the meta has been developing, and I've been pushing this whole Broodlord thing. I feel like Hydraling Baneling is great at engaging like in the middle of the map and like doing all ends and stuff, but ultimately Zerg needs an ultra late composition, and while the meta has been shifting in both the ZVP and ZVT lately, I think Hydraling Bane was like a, a stair step to something bigger and something better. Root Neuro is actually going to show us this. This is Austin Neuro Filsinger, a really great guy, very talented, great motivational speaker, teaches a lot of people on YouTube as well. If I remember to, I'll try and throw his channel into uh, the description, check that out below. But anyways, a little harassment here on the Adept, very fast three base. You can see the three bases have been established very, very early. Now, there's going to be a couple of things I actually want to look at with Nero's play. Because you can see that his opponent is going for fast Stargate. There's the uh, Oracle coming out. Some gateways following up. So, very, very standard Stargate opener. It's a two base play. Nero feels very safe to go for three base. And he has gone for Overlord Speed already. Overlord Speed is super important mostly because of this scouting moment here. And he's actually doing a double scout, which is great, because when your opponent, uh, op around four minutes, they just don't have the stalkers to kill off more than one overlord. So you can always get a full read. Now you see the Oracle coming in and does uh, get a couple of drones, uh, three drones killed so far. It may include some from the Adept. But anyways, it does get the, at least one of these overlords. Another one does get out, sees the third base, has gone down so feeling very confident here so in this particular circumstance I think most players would say it's gonna be a while until the big attack comes so what Nero is gonna do is go ahead and take a fourth base getting the layer and has plus one melee attacks coming now a lot of players will sometimes try to do like double upgrades but Nero is actually gonna stay on plus one melee plus two melee this translates very well into Broodlords, but also works really well with Lings. Now, we'll have some Lings out on the map at pretty much all points in this game because he wants to see any kind of scouting information, anything moving out here, and see he's taking the Zonaga Tower. So he's got some really great map control right now with these Lings because what's the ground really going to do? See the Adepts? moving right on out yeah it's gonna kill it off but he's gonna have time to make whatever he needs he sees the adepts he's got the baneling nest on the way great responses here um banelings are the answer to adepts right now and with all of this said maples is just gonna go back home playing the macro game continuing to kill off overlords and we don't really have anything coming out of this stargate we've got the charge we've got warp prism we've got plus one weapon so we may actually have a situation where drops can catch Nero off guard. However, Robo is a pretty obvious follow-up to Stargate, so he may kind of suspect this is coming, but this is in a really bad position to deal with drops. We'll see that come into effect later. Now, the two Oracles definitely want to get in here and do as much damage. This is a fairly decent spore, but again, could be over here, and that would help deal with uh, the drops as well, but Oracle only going to get a reveal here. And this is actually pretty decent spore crawler position to deal with the oracle. So you can see like spores can deal with drops or oracles, but positioning wise, not usually both. Now we've got the Hydra range coming, plus two melee attacks just now starting, Baneling speed on the way. And at this stage in the game is where Hydraling Baneling becomes most prominent. It allows a Zerg to take the map, but there's actually not that much contest for map control, so why overproduce? I love the decision making going in to this game by Nero. So he's completely recognized 
that his opponent doesn't actually uh, have any map control. So the drops do go down and has done its fair share of damage, mostly in lost mining time. Hydra Wing gonna go ahead and clean this up. But you see the Spore Crawler still kind of out of position to deal with this drop. A certain vulnerability was opened up by the Stargate and Nero not doing the best job at rescouting to find the Robo and prepare for this. We do have two Overlords getting ready to do a drop and a fourth base being taken by Maples. I actually really like this double spine crawler behind the mineral lines. Um, this is really good against drops, but more importantly, it reduces the surface area for the Zealots or the Adepts who have a lower range. And here we go, Ling Baneling going into the mineral line, does take some damage to this Overlord. And good um, pile on overcharges, gonna go ahead and clear this drop out, but that's a lot of energy going off on the Mothership Core. Stasis wards are pretty good. And we've got a little bit of adepts coming here on the left hand side. Some great counterattack. Uh, instinct here by Maples. And getting a little bit of a surround here on the adepts. Wants to be able to cut off any shading going that direction. Also, some really good contaminates. Contaminates the robo making a uh, immortal. Contaminates the plus a two right before it's going to finish. And then, of course, the Templar Archives. We do see the Spire on the way, as well as the Infestation Pit. Should see a high very shortly. Really good uh, cleanup on the drops and stuff with the Ground Army. So you can see Nero being aggressive out on the map, but mostly using his Ground Army defensively. Some really good creep spread. And the Overseers are actually kind of like almost his offense right now. Because you saw, like, that drop just didn't do what it should have. Set only seven workers killed. We do have a big worker advantage here for Maples. So, with the meta favoring the army of Protoss, the economy kind of, you know, tit for tat, but a slight advantage here to Maples, technology is going to be where Nero shines. And that's why I like having this Broodlord thing as an option. I'm not saying this is something you'll see in every game. It's just something that's really good to have as a backup. Good little drop going on here, as well as this little attack over in here. So he's buying time. It does manage to kill off a lot of those probies. 18 workers have now been killed. And Lings do not do very well against Archons, guys. Um, Archons want a huge amount of hydras with lings there to soak up damage so really smart choice here by Nero to go ahead and pull out he's buying time go ahead and getting some mutalisks to maybe force maples to be on his side of the map also you can sometimes over make brood lords and not have enough corruptors there so mutalisks are there as kind of a buffer unit in between also different uh travel uh movement speeds so definitely like the decision making going in this. Warp Prism, going to be coming into this fourth base. We've got a huge mass of Ling, well mostly Lings, but some Hydras and Mainlings there to support it as well. Now we are sitting on a, what, five base Protoss against a four, or I'm sorry, a five base Zerg against a four base Protoss. But the drops from Maples are pretty darn effective. You can see him here at this base and then also over here. Very smart to be going for the hatchery directly. And that means the spine colors will be ignored and this base will fall. Mutalisks now being revealed. And we'll see how Maples chooses to react to this. He does have plus three finishing up as well as Protoss air weapons level one. So he's probably going to be going for that mothership uh, composition with like carriers and stuff like that. Broodlords don't shoot up though, so why would you want that against carriers? Well, we'll see. Mostly it's the idea of free units. Trade your free units for their free units. And that warp prism getting cleaned up. Some 
really nice storms going down. Does hurt the Protoss army quite a bit, bleeding through a lot of his shield. Now Ling Bailing rolling, 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 and being forced to uh, disengage a little bit late there by Nero, but burning out a lot of this energy by the Templars and being forced to give up this uh, this base. However, the Broodlords have completed. And this is that technological advantage we were really talking about. Stalkers, just not that useful right now in this uh, particular meta, unless you are actually like, doing stalkers and committing to that. This is not what Maples was doing, and this is a huge vulnerability with limited anti-air. So this is why I really do like the Broodlord play. So of course, we've got the carriers coming as a follow-up. He's just going to trade this army as quickly as possible because he knows that as long as Broodlords are on the field, this is not going to be that great. He's getting as much damage done here as he possibly can. Nero really low on the bank. Maple's just spending the bulk of his uh, bank. And the game kind of stabilizing. Ultimately, we had Nero losing just this one base as well as a huge army, but so did Maple's. Uh, well, at least with the army, not necessarily the base. So overall, I chalk this as a small victory for Maples just because he did manage to get this base. However, the technological element definitely favors Nero here. And there's the Stalkers. Definitely a pretty hefty commitment to Stalkers, but just trading the Mutalisks as he does have the brood boards on the field right now. And... The interesting part is Maples is committed very heavily to carriers, but he doesn't want to make a bunch more Stargates. So Phoenixes are kind of out of the uh, uh, question right now. And Nero is recognizing this and responding to it brilliantly. Like, why does he care about Birdlords or Mutalists or anything? He knows his opponent can't make Phoenixes. He might as well make that. And then, of course, spending the uh, excess minerals on links. It's awesome. Alright, the slow moving Broodlord army has finally worked its way up north. The creep spread a little bit lacking, but reaching at least to the Zelnaga Tower. Stasis Ward's not going to be that useful in this situation. Bodon Cannons are falling very quickly. High Templar also falling very quickly. He's got to be very careful not to get these Stalkers up underneath the Broodlords. A lot of Overseers in this army though, so the Mothership not going to be that big of an issue. He's got to be very careful though not to lose these Hydralis as this is his main anti-air force. And here we go, bringing the Hydralis in as the Broodlords engage that main Protoss army. Very slow uh, time killing the Mothership, but with this many Overseers, the Mothership is basically a useless unit and a lot of wasted resources. So the Queen's coming into this uh, battle as well. Very, very slow, but very good with the Transfuse on top of the Broodlords. And we've got this one uh, Void Ray, or... Um, yeah, that is, that is a Void Wreck. Uh, about to be falling, with very low HP, and a very small army here for Maples. It's very good, very strong, very powerful, very well upgraded. Very technological, but very, very small. And that means, with great trades, as you can see from Nero right now, he should be able to knock back this army before it gets to that ultimate scary 200-200 composition that we all fear so much. And as you see... Uh, Nero taking a very easy game there and uh, showing us all yet another tool that should be in the Zerg toolbox. Guys, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. If you like this type of content or you are new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe on the channel. Like this video. It helps a ton. You can also become a ultimate member of Patreon by visiting the link in the description. There are rewards there for you based on your donations. Please check that out. Guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. See you next time. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.